Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Theophilus, and today we are talking about low back pain. Specifically, we're going to talk about two different types of surgical procedures, minimally invasive versus open low back surgery, and how to understand the difference in which one to pick. I trained at University of Tennessee, both surgery and neurosurgery, and I did my fellowship at Massachusetts General, after which I came here in 1993 and started my practice. I specialize in artificial disc replacement as well as minimally invasive low back surgery. So why are we talking about back pain? Well, back pain is so common, it's so prevalent. It's one of the number two reasons for ER visits, number one reason for work comp visits to the emergency room, and most back pains are from a structural issue wrong with your back, whether it's muscular, whether it's the disc, or whether it's the bone. And we'll get into that shortly. People with back pain, it can happen suddenly. You can lift a box and all of a sudden you have acute back pain. Or it can be slowly progressive, what we call insidious back pain. That comes more from the degenerative changes and the aging process of our spine. A lot of times it can affect the legs what we know as sciatica, people can get pain shooting down the legs, they can get weakness and numbness in the legs, and if it's bad enough, they can get have issues with their bowels and their bladder control. So what are the causes of low back pain? Well, number one, acute injuries, trauma, fractures, disc herniations, where the disc is the jelly donut between the bones, and the jelly donut tears, and the jelly squirts out, hitting a nerve, and that can cause sciatica. But also you can have instability from a fracture in the bone or the aging process, what we call as a spondylolisthesis, where the bones actually slip and move abnormally. And it's like walking around with a broken leg. You know, every time the bones rub, people get back pain. Also, scoliosis, very common. Um, and in the aging process, people can get degenerative scoliosis. So when people have low back pain, Good news is almost 90% of these people get better within six weeks of conservative care. And that's why we do conservative care. Conservative care in this screen shows things that decrease inflammation. So everything on this screen is aimed at decreasing inflammation. They're not going to cure a herniated disc. They're not going to cure your spinal stenosis. And they're not, it's not going to cure your step vertebrae. But as long as the inflammation goes away and the pain goes away, that's okay. That's what we want. We don't worry about what the MRI scan shows unless it's something really nasty like cancer or infection. So the main goal is decreased inflammation, heat, physical therapy, anti-inflammatory medication, and then the injections such as epidural injections all basically is, is taking a big anti-inflammatory dose and put it right next to the nerves. So we perform conservative care for approximately six to eight weeks. Well, people, if you don't get better, what do you do? Well, then you come to that why in the road and you decide, I'm going to make a decision in my life. What do I want to live with and what do I not want to live with? And the good news is that's a patient decision. That's not my decision. I'll give you the pros and cons of each, but you get to make that decision. So the decision is, do I proceed with surgical or not? If you are going to decide with sur I proceed with surgery, then you have to decide, well, how am I going to have it done? And who, who's going to do it? And that's a, that's a debate whether orthopedic or neurosurgery. Um, I'm a neurosurgeon, and I'm trained fully in spine reconstruction. Um, so I can take care of the nerves. If there's any issues or damage, I can help with that um, and help to relieve the pressure off the nerves. So the main question is, when I do surgery, am I going to have it open or am I going to have it minimally invasive? And that's what I want to talk about today and why the big difference between the two. Minimally invasive... Uh, versus open spine surgery. Well, the picture on the right shows an open spine surgery, and that's the traditional way we were all trained in our residencies to do it. And that's the way almost everyone in the city still does it. And what happens is an incision is made on your back in the middle, down along the bones. Once we get down to the muscle layers, all the muscles are stripped off the bones to gain exposure to the spine. Well, by stripping all these muscles off the bone, we figured out that eventually will cause muscle death and damage. The picture on the left is minimally invasive. And we'll get about into that later, where we spare all the muscles among our exposure. So the main 
difference between this is how we get access to the spine. Do we damage muscles or we don't damage muscles? All this affects things such as infection, bleeding rate, incision size, recovery rate, uh, depends on how the procedure is opened and performed. So the key thing is we're both accomplishing the same thing. We're both either taking out a herniated disc or a mass or stabilizing the spine. So we're, we're getting the end goal is going to be the same thing. We're going to accomplish the same thing. It's just how we get there. We've shown that with people that know how to do this procedure, and that's why not everyone does it because it's a very technically difficult procedure. I'm lucky the guy that trained me invented the procedure, and that's why I focus my entire practice on. Why do we want minimally invasive? Because you have less blood loss, you have a lower infection rate, you have a much quicker return to a normal life because there is no muscle damage. We have data showing that the recovery and the patients do better. They do better because they're in the hospital less, they get less complications because they're up and moving quicker, and they have a lot less pain and a quicker return to a normal life. The standard goals, as I said before, are the same between the two surgeries. We're both accomplishing the same thing, whether we're taking and using rods and screws and cages during the fusion or removing a disc herniation. And the key point is less muscle damage occurs with minimally invasive surgery. This MRI scan shows and depicts what happens with open back surgery. So the picture on the left shows the, the brownish bronze is the muscles in the 3D CT scan reconstructed. The pictures in the middle are MRI scans, as well as the one on the right, of your low back after back surgery. And one can see this big gray area here. That's all scar tissue from the exposure for open back surgery. If you look on this picture on the right, all this material here is scar tissue. All the muscle has died from the exposure gaining access to the spine. So a review of almost 2,300 patients was performed and it showed that because of we don't get the muscle death with minimally invasive spine surgery, our infection rates are almost zero. Our bleeding is negligible compared to open back surgery. Open back surgery, the infection rate can get anywhere from five to seven percent. Uh, the bleeding, a lot of times you have to transfuse patients because of all the muscle bleeding that occurs from removing it off the bone. And what happens, the bone never reattaches to the uh, muscle. And so that muscle basically becomes dead tissue. And that's why the bleeding and the infection rate is so much higher with open back surgery. That's also why people with back surgery, there's a 30% chance they'll have chronic back pain. Again, not from the bad surgeon or, or the procedure done wrong, it's just the exposure and the muscle damage that has occurred. This shows a, an MRI scan on the left of a herniated disc. It shows how the disc material has squirted out back here near the nerves compared to a normal disc. All this on the right shows all the different muscle groups that support the spine. And that's what the whole key about therapy and post-op therapy with spine is, is that by stabilizing these muscles and making them stronger, you'll help take the stress off the spine and a lot of people's back pain will go away or get better. Well, if the muscle's dead, that can't happen. These are more MRI scans showing the amount of muscle damage from open back surgery. All this gray area here is damage. This is what the normal muscle looks like. And you can see how all that is gone here from the exposure, just gaining access to the spine. Again, in a lumbar fusion, before surgery, you can see the big muscle groups here. After surgery, there's nothing but gray tissue, which is all scarred in dead tissue. So when comparing the statistics between minimally invasive and open back surgery, much less scarring, much less blood loss, a much lower infection rate, a much quicker recovery, and back to a normal life very much sooner than an open back surgery. And we're going to talk about two different types of minimally invasive back surgery. Briefly, one is the microdiscectomy. 
On the right shows how we do our microdiscectomy with muscle sparing approaches with tubes. On the left shows how all the muscle has been stripped off the bone and a retractor placed for open back surgery. So with minimally invasive, what happens under x-ray, we place a wire to where we want to go, and then we do progressive dilation. So basically, we go between the muscle fibers. The muscle fibers are like telephone wires. So basically, we put a, a dilator, larger dilator, larger dilator, and then that gives us our exposure. So then we can work through this tube and do our surgery leaving all the muscles attached still to the spine. We can get, remove the bone that we need to do. We can get the disc herniation out in these pictures here. And with the, removing the disc herniation, we, I use a laser because I evaporate the disc. So basically we're evaporating the jelly that has squirted out. We're not removing the jelly inside the jelly donut, just the jelly that has squirted out. And I use laser because by evaporating it, it's a much even field. And then we do a closure. And our incisions are usually this big, depending on what size of a dilator we use. So when we're done, we just pull the dilator out and the muscles go back to normal. The other procedure is a bigger procedure called a lumbar fusion. A lumbar fusion we perform on people that have instability of the spine, like the spondylolisthesis, uh, or that we have to lift the disc bases back up because they've collapsed so much from degeneration. Also, people that have recurrent disc herniations, they keep on blowing out a disc herniation at the same level. We call that an incompetent disc. They usually proceed on to a fusion. So a fusion, whether it's open or closed, is the same thing. We put screws in and we put a cage where the disc used to be to give the spine support. So open back surgery, like we said before, an incision in the middle. You strip all the muscles off the bone to get access to the spine and then you could do your work. What does that do? As I said, the muscles die and they, they lose the nerve supply to the muscles. So minimally invasive was again invented and this is where I've, um, I've specialized in. And what we do is we use the same technique as the dilators, but we get access to the spine by sparing the muscles. So we go between the muscle fibers. So the benefit, Again, much less blood loss and lumbar fusions lose a lot more blood than a microdiscectomy and they lose a much, they have a much higher infection rate than a microdiscectomy because it's a much bigger procedure. But when you do it minimally invasive, you still can make them through two small incisions instead of one huge incision from open back surgery. Again, the blood loss, the infection rate, shorter hospital stay, and basically return to normal life sooner. I have my patients wear a brace for four weeks only when they're out of bed, then after that, I get them going back to swinging golf clubs, short uh, wedges within six to eight weeks. So what do we apply this for? Again, as I said before, slip vertebrae, certain cases of spinal stenosis, recurrent disc herniations, uh, and definitely scoliosis. This is the video uh, describing the procedure. And what this is called is the mass T lift. And, um, we're showing the area of the spine we're treating, which is the low back. This is the spine, and we're, that's the affected level that is red, that there's a damaged disc there, or slip vertebrae. So the patient is positioned on the table, and again, under x-ray, and the one negative thing about this uh, procedure is that I get x-rayed a lot, because a lot of this is done under live x-ray. Um, so I may be glowing when you see me in the office, but. We make two small incisions and we get access to the spine through these minimally invasive approaches that we spare the muscles. These screws are placed into the spine and attached to these screws are retractor blades. So all the muscle remains attached. We actually stimulate these blades to ensure that we're not near any nerves. Then we place the retractor on these blades, and now we have complete access to the spine and we can light it up. So that's our view of the spine, with the two screws in there for stabilization. We then can do all our work through this little portal entry and remove all the disc and disc herniation and get all that area cleaned out. We also can re-expand it by putting a cage in there. 
And that cage will give more structural support to the spine to help decrease pain. And it will stabilize any instability. That's the procedure. And we have destroyed no muscles. We then put two more screws on the other side, the same technique, and then we close the incision. All the muscles return back to normal. And this how is how much I'm involved with this procedure. I invented the cage. What we do is that we can put this cage in there and we can expand it. And it restores the patient's natural curve to the spine by, as we expand it in the front of it. We then pack it with bone. And that's a picture of what it looks like afterwards. The area of slippage has been stabilized by the screws and the cage is in there to support the spine packed with bone to allow it to heal. Um, patients ask me, will I feel my screws? No, you'll never even know they're there. They're put in correctly, you'll forget about them probably in a few months. Um, and all these screws do is they just allow this bone to heal within the cage. After surgery, the most important thing is core stabilization. So we let you heal for four weeks, we take you out of the brace, and then I put you to work on doing back exercises and core stabilization. That's how you protect your spine from any injury to the other levels. And core stabilization that not only hits the big muscles, your psoas muscles, your hamstrings, your buttock muscles, but also the small muscles around the spine. And all, they, all those will do is provide structural support. One of the best things is Pilates. This Pilates focuses on core stabilization. Spine Pack is an herbal medication, all herbal that I invented about six, seven years ago. We did scientific clinical studies and have shown that it promotes a healthy back, uh, increases mobility and flexibility, and decreases inflammation of the spine. And we saw that here at the practice. So I want to thank you for spending time with us today and learning more about back pain and different types of techniques for treatment of back pain. If you have any issues, there's no reason why you have to live with pain. So we're here to help. Feel free to call us. I'm Dr. Charles Theophilus. My email, website's on the screen as well as our phone number. We'll be more than happy to see you and evaluate you and do everything we can to get you out of pain. The good news about me is I'm probably the most conservative surgeon you've ever met. And I do everything I can to prevent surgery on patients because I think that's ultimately the best. But if it needs to get done, I don't think anybody is more experienced in the minimally invasive techniques than I am in this area. Thank you and have a great day.